All right, so I've got our ballistics gel lined up. Behind me is four blocks of clear ballistics, 10% uh, ballistics gel. I've got about 64 inches total, and we're trying out three of those Aria ballistics rounds. I've got this. This is the 221 grain shock hammer. That's out of the 454 Casul case, but it is a 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum load. And this I chronographed at 1873. I can't wait to see what that's gonna do. After that, we're gonna shoot this. This is a 350 grain Hawk jacketed flat point. This I chronographed, I wanna say 1554. And then this, I am real eager to see what this does. This is a 515 grain jacketed flat point from Hawk going chronographed out of my gun 1640 feet per second now i'm not going to bother <laughs> with the with the hard cast bullets because as we know from the past they just zip right through which is what you'd expect i mean those bullets are designed to just go and keep going this stuff is designed to have some expansion not necessarily a ton but some so that it can do more damage in terms of delivering the energy so let's see what they do let's start with that shock hammer and then we'll move on to the uh Jacket of lap points. This should be interesting. Okay, due to the poor audio quality I'm just narrating over, you can see we had a high strike that uh, hit the gel. However, it gave us a nice wide track. A little tough to see through some of the wrinkles of the new gel. I thought it had exited here, but it didn't. It went right through. As you can see, it's a little bit of a small um, wound channel at this point. And then it, it stopped right after the third block. It stopped in the fourth block at right about 49 inches. So you can see there, it's kind of stuck halfway between each. And um, again, it's 49 inches total. So here I was able to extract the bullet off camera uh, due to the fact that the, I was the only person recording, I couldn't you know, do that on, on film. It has this very strange kind of opening here at the tip where it's opened and it almost looks like a lamprey, like it needs to find a shark. And uh, these petals are supposed to rip off, though, from what I'm understanding. They should expand fully and rip off, so I didn't know what caused that on the ballistic gel. But still, very interesting result. So here I went over to take a look at the gel to see if I caught the bullet, and unfortunately I didn't. The bullet actually went out the top. My second shot hit here, it came along here, and then exited out here. So I'm going to try and take one more shot with this.
So here you can see it took four tries. I had a bullet that was too high, one too off to the right, one too off to the left. Finally got this little piggy to be just right. It's a little tough to see with the other tracks, but it did leave a wide wound channel, significantly wider than the shock hammers. You can see all the way through here the second block and stopped at the beginning of the third block. So when we got the measuring tape out, it was 33 and 3 quarters inches. So it was a pretty impressive penetration. As you can see here, it did expand rather nicely. And I do pull it out so that we can get a closer look at the bullet here in just a second. And there's the bullet. As you can see, it expanded very nicely. It's got a very tough, thick outer copper jacket that really kept everything together. I was very impressed by what I saw with this bullet. So it was, it was a definite good one to use in hunting. And after three tries, even though this one was a little low like the previous two, we finally caught the bullet. It actually traveled through all of the gel here, as you can see, with that low track. But it made it all the way through and into the fourth block, which used to be the first one. And there it is at the end of the block right there. And uh, you can see I'm trying to get a good view of it here. Right there, it's clear that you can see it. And the measurement came out to 61 and a quarter of an inch. So I had 63, 64 inches of gel and it made it through almost all of it. Apologize for the microphone fuzz in the upper right hand corner. Here's that bullet so you can get a better look at it. As you can see it did expand at the front a little bit but this bullet according to Jason Salvini who's the uh, founder and CEO over at Aria Ballistic Engineering worked with Hawk to make this bullet so that it wouldn't expand too much. They were really more concerned about the integrity and the punch of this bullet than the expansion. It's also a 50 caliber bullet, so it doesn't need to expand much. Jason also told me he wasn't sure I was going to be able to catch this in ballistics gel because it doesn't expand so much, and he was almost right. 61 and a quarter inches of ballistic gel, it almost went through everything I had, so good call on that one, Jason. And the one other thing I want to show you guys... Um, all this damage you're about to see, all of this was caused by the ballistic gel expanding into the table. You can see it really just destroyed the table there. And uh, the gentleman at Lever Guns 50 took a little bit of grief from somebody who said, oh, when you hit a water jug, it doesn't explode. It wouldn't crack a center block. Well, yeah, it would, because that, that energy's got to go somewhere. And as you can see, it went right into my table. So pretty neat effect. Okay, so let's take a look at our bullets uh, here to kind of conclude things. The first one is the 221 grain, here we are, shock hammer. Now this is from the 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum. Now it opened up kind of like a lamprey, but it's supposed to peel these petals all the way back, expand and break off. The bullet diameter shrunk to about 0.442 inches after going through the, uh, the rifling barrel from 0.452. So that's a 0 0.008 or 8 thousandths of an inch difference. The lamprey mouth only expanded to 0 0.428 inches. So we didn't get the expansion we'd want. However, weight retention, weight retention I'm sorry, was great at 221.1 grains, meaning it didn't lose anything. But this is designed to expand more and lose those pedals. So I'm kind of interested to see what this would do uh, in a real 
game situation if you're hunting. If anyone's tried these, let me know. The next one is the 350 grain Hawk jacketed flat point made for the 460 Smith & Wesson Magnum. As you can see, now this expanded a lot. This is designed to do that. It's got this very thick jacket too that keeps everything together. Weight retention was 339.8 grains, which is 97% of the 350 grains it started with. And at its widest point, it was 0.766 inches, which is really phenomenal. And last but not least, the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum 515 grain jacketed flat point from Hawk. And as you can see, it kind of smooshed the front, you know, not evenly too, which is kind of interesting. If you look at it, as I, whoops, as I try and rotate it and turn it, it doesn't have an even push to it. At its widest point, it's 0.4, no, I'm sorry, 0.54 inches, so it actually did expand a little bit. Weight retention was pretty good at 500.6 grains, which again is 97% of the original weight, which was 515 grains. Again, as I stated earlier, this bullet is really designed to less expand and more to punch and power through, which it definitely does. I mean, it, it got, as you guys recall, 61.25 inches of gel. So let me know in the comments below which of these three you would prefer if you're on a hunting trip and what you think. I think Aria Ballistic Engineering has provided us some really great ammunition. I'm going to try these out on a 10 pound ham and see what we get. I think you guys will like to see the results from that. It'd be very interesting. If you enjoyed the video, I really appreciate it. If you'd like and subscribe because that really helps us out with the algorithm here. If you didn't enjoy the video, as always, I thank you for taking the time to watch this this far. And as always, guys, go big boar or go home.